thing the UK government is at pains to say, two things. First of all, that they're not doing this in many regards to show that the UK Parliament is supreme and that it can slap down Scottish legislation at any point that it wants, though, of course, in theory, it can. This is the first time it's ever happened, though, since that devolution settlement back in 1998. So he's saying that we're not doing this just because we can, and we're also not doing this just because we dislike the legislation. Now, there are many within the Conservative Party who, frankly, do not like uh, the legislation that is Alan has been voted on and passed overwhelmingly in the Scottish Parliament when it comes to gender recognition. Uh, many feel it goes too far, and it's not just a view inside the Conservative Party. Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, set out his objections at the weekend, saying he thought that 16, that's the age at which you, in theory, if this was to become law in Scotland, you could change your gender was uh, too uh, young. And he's not saying it's not because we disagree with the legislation that we're doing this either, even though they do. It's because, as you say, he's taken legal advice from across government, and they believe that this cuts across the Equalities Act, the Equalities Law that is in place across the whole of the United Kingdom from 2010. And that is why they're suggesting to the Scottish Government, why don't you amend the legislation and we'll see if it can fit in with that Equalities Act, and then it will get royal assent. And also, interestingly, today, Alistair Jack announced something that we thought was going to happen, though has been talked about, it must be said, for a very long time from the Conservative Government, in fact, way back to Theresa May when she was Prime Minister, that they are going to now finally legislate when it comes uh, to banning conversion therapy, that is for LGBT people, uh, this idea that you know people can find themselves in a very vulnerable situation and uh, be converted, if you like, uh, to try and uh, not be LGBT, something the government has promised it's going to ban for a very long time. Uh, they are going to choose that, but it is also going to be extended to uh, trans people as well. Uh, and I think this is an attempt by the government to show that this is not them in many ways trying to take a position on the trans issue, that they are going to extend this uh, and that th th in the end this is all about the law and the legal advice the government have received. But yes, it is yeah. a very complicated situation and it is one that plays into not just the ongoing debate about the rights of trans people and how that might impact the rights of other people. But it also, of course, impacts on Scottish Parliament and politics as well, in the sense that the SNP may well use this as an example, they would claim, of where Westminster is trampling on yeah. the independence and the authority of the Scottish Parliament. Yeah, it seems, I mean, the legal advice that they received, it seems to centre on these words, serious adverse impact. And he's talked about single-sex uh, spaces, for instance, and the impact that it may have on women and girls, uh, sort of bearing in mind the 2010 Equality Act. But as you pointed out, I mean, we heard from the SNP there at Westminster using one of the most marginalised groups to pick a fight with Scotland. I mean, clearly they see an opportunity here uh, to really sort of use this to ram home the, the case for Scottish independence. Yeah, and that's why, Mark, I'm, I'm suggesting that that's why the government are at pains today yeah, to yeah. say that this is not about this particular act in terms of the content. Of, and in addition to that is why they've also announced the extension of this ban on conversion therapy to trans people, again, to show that, it, you know, in theory, they're not trying to pick on this uh, kind of the right of a, of a small minority of people uh, who clearly are uh, very uh, vulnerable. And there is a recognition, I think, politically at Westminster, across the board, that actually this issue does need to be looked at, that the current processes in place for trying to change your gender are not perfect and do need uh, to change. But you're right, there is also a suspicion within the government, uh, within politicians, again, across the board at Westminster, that the SNP have actually picked on this particular issue uh, to try and beat the government uh, with, that they knew that this would potentially raise these legal issues and that it is part of a wider campaign, their independence campaign, to try and uh, make some political gain out of this when it comes uh, to the Scottish independence uh, question. So it's quite difficult to untangle, really, you know, who is at play here and, you know, it's quite contentious, it's very difficult, these are very sensitive issues and yet they've got massive wider constitutional issues mm. about where power rests in the United Kingdom and frankly this is going to you know be a big big rather that's going to carry on potentially into the courts but ultimately I think the big question in all of this is where does Scottish public opinion lie because that could be right. crucial to everything and there is and there are polls suggesting that a majority of people in Scotland aren't in favour of this legislation even though it was 
overwhelmingly backed by MSPs. And if that is the case, will they really be that concerned that Westminster has blocked it? I'm not entirely sure. I don't think the SNP's argument this is a constitutional crisis will necessarily echo quite in the same effect or in the same way that they hope it does.